Well, let's go ahead and start. Uh, I want to back up. Once again, I saw some glazed looks out there, and uh, part of it was I, one that slide that I had that had an error on it that was detected over here uh, was part of it. And then I, th I think I was so anxious to get through some material that I, I probably glossed over a couple of details. So I'm, this uh, material right here is what we did yesterday with a few edits. And so if you go on the web or on T-Square and look at the new uh, Lecture 22, you will see it's revised and uh, you know, modestly. And uh, let's go through this. So I want to explain this exchange principle again. So underneath this picture, you're supposed to envision a graph. And then I take an edge, which is not in this spanning tree. That's the red edge E. Then there is a unique path in the tree between the two endpoints of E. And so I pick any edge F of that path. And then the principle is that you can remove F and insert E, and it's still a spanning tree. When this picture was shown last time, the green edge was there, and as was pointed out, I made no change in the tree. This is a, this is a different spanning tree. All right, now, I pointed out that this is a, a new kind of vector space, but a vector space over a finite field. So I don't, I don't want to really revisit that, but I do want to talk about this notion of the constrained spanning tree and the explanation for the correctness of the two algorithms that we have learned. So again, we're going to be talking about a spanning forest. And here are the components. Notice that in this spanning forest, many of the components are just individual vertices. So spanning forest means it's a forest, and every vertex in the parent graph is in the forest. And so the problem then is if management tells you that you must use these edges, how can you find a spanning tree of minimum weight but subject to the handicap that it must include these? Now, I use the word handicap carefully because it's a constraint. And the constraint that management gives you may be terrible, but you could have a good manager and they could give you a configuration that's optimal to this point, and they're just asking you to complete the task. All right. And so what I'm suggesting with this picture is that you must live with the green choices, and then you have to find uh, additional ones to form a spanning tree, but the weights, the total of the weights on the, all the edges is supposed to be as small as possible. Okay. Now, the fundamental lemma is the following. If you're given a spanning forest and you take any component C of that spanning forest and simply look at all of the edges with one endpoint in C and one endpoint not in C and among them choose an edge E of minimum weight, the lemma asserts that subject to your constraint there is an optimum solution containing the edge E. Okay. Now, if we can prove this lemma, then it follows quickly that both Kruskal and Prim are optimum. Again, for Kruskal, what you do is imagine that you go select the edge next, the cheapest edge which doesn't form a cycle, and then you look at its two endpoints. Its two endpoints are in different components. Then choose one of them as C and repeat the assignment. Find the cheapest edge with one endpoint in C. Well, it's the cheapest edge of them all. So Kruskal works. And why does Prim work? Prim works because management just gets lazy and says, oh, use the same old component. Start with a root. That's your component. Now you put in an edge. That's your new component. You put in another edge. You got a component with three vertices. 
etc. And that's why PRIM works. So this lemma is key. If you have this lemma, you have everything.